Well, we're back to the Great Oregon Steam Up in wow. Antique Power Land. A little bit of everything. A little bit of everything. And uh, this week, some really crazy stuff. They call these stationary engines in that when they're running, they don't actually go anywhere. You park them, they stay put. And uh, But then they do things because they're engines. I was just going to say, what's the point? <laughs> what's the point? Yeah, so uh, back in the day, they could hook these to all kinds of things. So right. actually, some of them are out of ships. They're marine engines and and power plants and thrashing machines and uh, one was uh, connected to an apple peeler as I anyway that's good. just just really fun interesting <laughs> goofy uh, fun antique equipment gasoline and steam so check this out <laughs> Well, last week we were playing with tractors. Yes, I thought I was back on the farm again. <laughs> back on the farm. These weren't usually used for like plowing fields or anything. They were just a mobile power source where you could take an engine out to where you needed it and it could drive itself around. But quite often you simply located uh, the power source where you needed it and it was permanently installed. So here they've got a whole other museum dedicated to stationary engines. And those are cool. Aren't they cool? But not all of these things are permanently installed. Uh, in fact, the vast majority of them arrived on trucks and trailers. And oh, stuff. look at that. <laughs> these hit and miss engines, a uh, big meat like this. There were hundreds of these things, I think, that just came in from all over the place. But they also have this permanent museum where they have some of these huge engines uh, permanently installed in uh, several different buildings. One of the things I really like about these older engines is they have so many exposed mechanics. All sorts of uh, valve mechanism and intake manifolds, just all sorts of strange things hanging off the side of the engine. Well, for me, it almost looks like art. It is. It's, uh, I mean, nowadays we call that steampunk. Right. <laughs> and it's non-functional. Back then they called it how you thrash. <laughs> yes. Or, or make hay bales or something. This was a huge hit and miss engine that was out of a mine. Wow, look at that. Isn't that thing crazy? That's this, awesome. This ran the, the hoist at the head frame. Okay. So that big drum right there would have had a cable wrapped around it. And right. When they needed to pull stuff up out of the mine, this would pull the hoist up out of the mine and then lower the miners back down into the mine. But it only fires when it needs to. Once the RPMs drop to a certain point, then it opens the intake valve here that lets in fuel and it fires. That's amazing. Isn't that incredible? And then it just stores this energy in these huge flywheels. And then pretty soon it needs to fire again. It actually doesn't sound like much here in the building, which is good. <laughs> but if you walked outside by the exhaust pipe, oh my. <laughs> a little bit loud, yes. <laughs> loud and throwing dust and dirt all over the place. It was just quite an explosion coming out of this thing. I'm wondering how safe that is to be around something like that. The motion and wheels and oh my. Well, back then, people were killed on the job all the time. There was no OSHA no. or insurance or anything. <laughs> Now this was actually my favorite stationary engine. It's a four-cylinder marine engine out of a tugboat. Oh, neat. Isn't that cool? I love all the exposed uh, valve gear here, these rocker arms and all of this. And look how complicated it is to start. Uh, th uh, this guy uh, got his exercise every time he started it. <laughs> no fuel injection on this one. <laughs> no, you, you've got to throw I can see why they had a, a, a permanent guy stationed in the engine room. The, the engine operator, first of all, he had to run the throttle on it. It's a full steam ahead. Well, in this case, full gasoline ahead. But, <laughs> but you had to have somebody constantly running this. For one thing, the oilers over here need to be run constantly. And uh, if there isn't somebody standing here operating this thing, after a few minutes, it's going to seize up.
Now, of course, most people don't think of internal combustion engines in the Victorian era. We think of steam engines. But uh, internal combustion engines were invented in 1859 in France. That's crazy. And so they were around. Uh, they weren't put in automobiles because, as you can see, they're rather large. <laughs> Well, there's large and then there's large. Aren't these things monstrous? Oh, my. These are out of power plants. Oh, okay, that figures. Yeah, so you needed electricity at all times. Uh, even in the Victorian era, they were doing a lot with electricity. And this monster right here is a diesel engine. Diesel came along a little bit later. But it was used to power a generator. And the generator is on display outside the building. They no longer have it hooked up to the engine. Now, diesel engines require uh, heat. Modern diesel engines have glow plugs uh, that you turn on electrically, and that preheats the engine. But this brute has uh, propane heaters, and apparently the propane heaters weren't working, so you can see they've just taken two propane torches and rigged them to the side of the engine and the guys up here lighting both of these propane torches to preheat the heads. Boy, if you're not careful, you could sure set fire to your beard. <laughs> he just about preheated his head instead of the head of the engine. But uh, he's got his burners going now and everything's looking good. But it's going to take a few minutes for this heat to heat up the heads to a point where the diesel fuel can combust. The system also used a lost oil oiling system. Uh, you feed oil in and it just sort of leaks out all over the place. So he's got to refill the oil reservoir here every time he starts up the engine. And then if it were running constantly, you'd have to refill this periodically. Sounds like a car I had. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it just leaves a trail as it's going down the road. This just kind of spills off into little buckets they had setting around. Well, his heads are just about warmed up, and now he's ready to apply compressed air to the intake manifold. And that forces the engine to go around, and in a few seconds, it actually starts igniting the diesel fuel. Now he's manually pumping some diesel fuel into the system to prime it, and we should get combustion. Any second now. Oh, there it goes. Now you can cut off your air. And as soon as the heads warm up properly, it will start to run smoothly. And there we have it. Oh, it's starting to run away. Throttle back a bit. Find a good speed. It's amazing how smooth this thing runs once it's, it's, it's all It's amazing. Over. Wow. Yeah, it, the thing's older than he is. <laughs> <laughs> and look how smooth it runs. With a ready supply of electricity, it's amazing how fast the world started changing when all of these power plants started coming online. Now this is fascinating. They've got a complete machine shop and it's all run by one motor. In this case, an electric motor, but that could just as easily have been a steam engine or even an internal combustion engine. But every one of these machines is run by this motor here and then the power is delivered to all the other machines through belts and pulleys. Reminds me of my grandpa's shoe shop. Exactly. It looks exactly like a grandpa's shoe shop. It was a fun place to visit. I was always, you know, impressed with all the belts and pulleys. And what does this do? And <laughs> yeah, we've just like that. We've kind of lost this. Uh, but back in the day, this was pretty common to see a whole shop run by one central motor. Yeah. 
If you remember, I built that fun machine shop on Steve's layout in O scale. You at, did, <laughs> yeah, at downtown Iron, uh, down down underground, underground, Iron Town. underground. But I built a whole machine shop run by a steam engine down there. Well, without question, the stars of the show were still the giant steam tractors. I like these. They're so cool. But there were more stationary engines than there were these uh, tractors, both the internal combustion and the steam tractors. But when these things start rolling around, they really have a way of stealing the show. But if you didn't get in there and explore the stationary engines, well, you missed a lot because there was so much going on. So that was uh, stationary engines. Wow. Wow, well, aren't those things neat? Well, I like to hit and miss engines. The hit and just, miss, ah, yeah. yeah. David used to call those one poppers. One poppers. You can understand why, because they go pop, pop, pop. I had a car that ran like that. I had a Mustang that ran like that. <laughs> it was tragic, really. I was an Osmobile. Yeah. <laughs> Galva <laughs> Flood. At, at any rate, those are, those are uh, stationary steam engines and, well, stationary gasoline engines, uh, generally speaking, diesels, all kinds of stationary kinds. engines. And that was a good deal of fun. We're going to be back next week with some more stuff. There's so much crazy stuff here at Antique Power Plant. So we'll be showing you that. So that will be next week's show. If you haven't been over to the channel, do pop over to the channel, and while you're at it, subscribe. Absolutely. Because if you subscribe, then it helps us out because Google likes to see subscribers, mm -hmm. and it helps you out because then you get notified every time we upload a movie. Right. If you click on your little notification bell, which of course you want to do after you subscribe, by clicking on the big blue button. Are you ready for it? Zoink. Big blue button right. right there says subscribe. Means exactly what it says. Wow. Well, we're not sure how you found this movie on the internet. We hope you didn't find it boring. And we will see you here again in one week with some more screwing around at Antique Power Land. <laughs> we'll see you. Bye-bye.